Hi everybody, my name's Ian Ellis. This is another film for Great Artists Steel. I'm going to be focusing on Vincent's chair here and um, focusing on the colour contrasts and why it actually glows. If you look at the painting and just on that little scene there, you can see how the yellow is really intense. And how does he manage to do that? What's he doing? Um, well, to understand that, what we need to do is try and look at the contrasts and see what is done. Um, in the previous video, we focused on the simultaneous contrast, but this painting, it doesn't have the complementary colours as the other one has. So remember the, the wheat field, if you look at a film, you'll see it's the wheat fields have got orange and the actual sky and the hills are blue. Um, but this one, the blue is slightly less, is a slight bit, and there's not that many reds. There's a few reds here. These we call complementary colours. They're opposite colours, so when you put them next together, next to each other, they create uh, white light. And if we go back to the same Maxwell's colour triangle I was showing you in that video, uh, you will see you've got the uh, complementary colours here. This is a green blue, and this is a warm red, slightly darkened by Vincent. And uh, so, but it's small; it's not taken over the painting. Um, and what dominates the painting is obviously the, the yellow, but the, the actual floor has got quite a lot of um, oranges or yellow. Almost, uh, if you darken an orange, these yellow oranges they go a bit greenish and. Quite a lot of orange browns, but browns coming into the painting. So they, you're getting quite a lot of colours over here, which are darkened and going a bit more yellow as they come in. So there's quite a lot of uh, orange and, and this green. Now, if you look at the other colour contrasts I've had there, does it have hue contrast? Uh, the answer is no, because you, these are all the hues. This is the hue. If you had a hue contrast in that painting, you'd have all these intense colours. Is it a value? It has value. The the floor. The value being light and dark, um, the floor you can see is quite dark and there's a few darker colours but it's not as big high level light and dark as the cypress trees but it's got, uh, it still has the yellows much lighter than so obviously that plays a part in making the yellow look stronger. Saturation, saturation level is, is, is got strong yellows, greyer, greyer um, shades of, of, of oranges and reds. Uh, tints of uh, yellow green um, so it's got a big range of saturation so that's included so we've got the saturation partly value analogous and just that's interesting that's when all the colors are quite closely related so you might find a lot of these colors all on that one side in the same painting and I think that's very true for this painting what I'll explain that a little bit when we go through the contrast what's happening there uh, what I think is happening there that is um, <clears throat> And what you go to extension, that's an interesting one as well. The extension is uh, uh, how much area each colour has uh, or how much area. And this is, obviously this is really complex. You, there's no way Vincent would be aware of all this or we're using this kind of knowledge for creating this painting. Let's make that very clear. But uh, what happens is that artists are intuitive creatures and they are, that intuition is knowledge. Uh, and they're, they're tuning into knowledge that exists out there but it's kind of beneath the surface of the brain and it's kind of um, when an artist paints but someone like me or other people who analyze the paintings can come out with some kind of logic and that's what i'm doing and, and the, the extension is quite an interesting one because it's very very important how much of that green yellow or how much of the floor do you have and how much of that color do you have to make it work and that what makes it so difficult to do a good painting uh, you've got all these factors involved Warm and cool, would you say that was a warm and cool painting? Yes, you would, but I wouldn't call him a warm and cool artist. Uh, a lot of warm and cool artists, what they do is they reduce the values to everything's almost the same. Um, I would call Cezanne, um, an artist who works with warm and cool. Turner would work with warm and cool. So I wouldn't really call him, even though there are warm and cool in there, but I think it's more complementary or dealing with uh, the different kind of analogous. I think that maybe analogous contrast and complementary contrast are just in there. But the main one, I think, is this one and the extension, obviously. I just want to go for the extension first. I've just written a few things to, for, my own, for my sake in this little scene. But all these colours down this side of the triangle aren't in the painting. Uh, all you've got is they've got the red and you've got the, um, this, this red and that green. They're complementaries and they'll create white light. 
but again, there's not that much red and there's not much green. So if there were a big field of red and a big field of that, I would say very much that he was interested in the complementary and simultaneous, but he's not, it's not doing that. It's still got these colors in there and these would create white light by mixing them. Uh, or, what our eye would do would move around the painting of, between the two and leave uh, a white light in our eye. Um, but what he does do is this analogous contrast. There are lots of colors that are all running down here and you can see if I've kind of put it's about 50% of the painting I think are kind of uh, oranges in the painting or ochres in the, within the painting. 6% um, I would say a bit of red. Uh, I'm getting, this is a very loose root idea of it. 18% I worked out was something about for this color that area there. Another 18% for the greeny blue there but maybe not so much. But this yellow greens up here, and this is interesting. This is, I think, where the main contrast is. What might why it works? Why it looks so yellow? It's got this green, which is yellow green, and it's got the oranges here. And you mix those. If your eye moves between them, you, you quickly because I think it's hard to explain. What what, you, what you're dealing with is the um, positive afterimage uh, when we look at something, and it just lingers for a short period of time. But it's a short period of time when we look at the painting. Um, so I don't think he's using um, negative after images, but the, uh, which is the complementary colour of all those. So if he does an inverted version of that, that would look purple. But I don't think if he was going for the complementary contrast or the simultaneous, you'd find lots of purple in it, complementary colour that would make all that, uh, that, that yellow look stronger. So what I think he's doing is using colours either side of the yellow. Um, and when our eye looks at it, we, we mix these two colours. It's the same way if we're mixing light. Um, if you, you'll see on the wheat field and uh, cypresses uh, painting in the video, um, you'll see there's a little triangle showing, showing the, the Venn diagram of showing it's light mixing. And you'll see that it will make uh, the three colors when they mix together make this white light, but either side of it, you'll see these two colors uh, overlap and make this yellow. And that's exactly, I think, what's happening here. You've got your eye looks at this, you look between the two. And your eyes sees a lot of oranges and lots of reds and lots of these yellow greens and that moves over in a very quick and um, we get this positive after image, meaning positive after image is actually the painting itself, the colours we're looking themselves, go on back of the retina and they activate um, uh, by mixing that will layer over that, that will layer over that and create yellow. So when we look at the painting, um, um, these yellows look strong and they glow the same way you would get if you put the complementary colour next to all those colours but it's using the either so it's an analogous contrast, I would call that. That's why analogous contrast works, because their eye moves between the two. Um, and any contrast works the same way within that. Um, basically, that's it. I just want to show you, that I've got the, this is what this is kind of thing that happens. I've got the orange here, which is a purer state, and I've got the yellow-green, we see quite a lot of them, which is darker in, in, in Van Gogh's paintings. But if I put a yellow down here, you look at that yellow, I put it between there, you'll see the difference between the beauty of the yellow. This started off, this fields of colour, Van Gogh, this started off for uh, people thinking about colour, like large fields of colour, and this is where 20th century abstract painters came into play, people like Rothko, Ellsworth Kelly, started big fields of colour. So uh, they all owe a debt to Vincent Van Gogh. Um, thanks for tuning in everybody, um, just one thing, I, 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 don't forget to subscribe. If you're subscribing, my students tend to think that we have to pay, but we don't, it's free. All we're doing is, if by subscribing, we can then let you know when a, a video is uh, available for you to watch. They should be coming out every two weeks, so every, every time it comes out, you'll get notification if you subscribe. So, thank you very much, see you again, bye.